Now that we have SCOM already installed, it's nice to know installing a second management server is a little easier than the first. And for some of you listening, you won't even bother with installing a second management server at all. Maybe you've got a small environment, you just don't require multiple management servers, or perhaps you won't need failover capabilities. Well, if that sounds like you, skip this video. Otherwise, let's crack on, we'll get our second management server installed. Now, like with our first management server though, this one will also have some prerequisite things to do. I'm going to have to open up firewall ports, I'm going to have to add those accounts, our action account, and our DAS account to the local admins group, install all of those features and roles. But with this server, I'm going to install the management server and the console, but I'm going to skip the web console this time, as that saves us from having to install all of those IIS features. And yes, as promised, I've got scripts for all this. So since we've already seen how to do this manually, the first steps for me are to run the scripts to open up the firewall ports, add those accounts, the action account and the DAS account to the local admin group. So let's go and do that. So we'll go and open up a PowerShell prompt. And we'll also locate in Windows Explorer our scripts folder. And the first script for us will be to open up the firewall ports for the management server. So let's just copy and paste that into the PowerShell prompt. All right, that's done. So our second script will be to add our SCOM accounts to the local admin group. And that's done. And the final step before we actually install our second management server is to install the prerequisite software. Now, for this server, I did say I won't be installing the web console. So, let's just expand this. This time, I'll be running this script to install our prerequisite software without the web console. So let's just change into my software folder, followed by my scripts folder, and we'll hit enter. And this time, I'm not going to pause the video, we'll wait around because it won't take long to install both of those. Alright, already done. So now we're ready to install our second management server. Now, since there are some subtle differences in the installation, um, because this is our second server, I'm going to run through the installation manually. I'll cancel it at the end, and then we'll do it via script. So let's just go to our Windows Explorer and our software folder, our SCOM folder, and we'll run setup. Again, we'll click install. This time we'll choose our management server and operations consoles and we'll click next. The default path is fine. Uh, the wizard is going to verify obviously that we've met our prerequisites. It says it's pending a restart, but that's fine. We'll click next. Now this time we'll be adding a management server to an existing management group. So we're going to choose the second option. We'll click next. We'll accept the license terms and click next. Now here we're going to have to tell our wizard our SQL server name. So we're going to enter that in. That's cull SQL01. And again, we'll hit tab and it's going to contact that server like it did in the previous video. It's going to look for the operational database, which when it finds it, we'll be able to select it from this drop down window. All right, now our fields have opened up, so we'll be able to select it from the window as I said a moment ago. And we'll click next. Now here we need to enter in the service accounts that we created in the earlier video. So the same as we did before, cullen s-scomaa and the password. And then the same for the DAS account. Again, if you make a mistake here with any of the usernames or passwords, the wizard is going to tell you. All right, so we're done there. Let's click next. Same diagnostics and usage data that we've seen before. We'll click next. We're not going to use Windows Update, Microsoft Update, excuse me. We'll click next. And that's it. Now, if we click install, the installation, of course, is going to begin and it will result in a second management server being installed into our management group. Okay, so that's the manual way of installing a second management server. And it'll be exactly the same for a third, fourth, fifth, or however many you like to install. But like I said, I also have a script for this too, so let's go and take a look at it. So we'll cancel this wizard, and we'll close our setup window two, and we'll go to our scripts folder, 
And at the bottom here, I've got two scripts, one for installing an additional SCOM management server with a web console and one without. So no prizes for guessing which one we'll use. We'll use the second one. So let's open it up and have a quick look. And to be completely honest with you, there's a quite a few lines of code that we don't need in here. Just really the part in the middle where we install a SCOM. In fact, let me just change this to a word wrap view so you can see the whole thing. This part here is really the most important part where we're using a start process command to kick off our setup file, which is located here. And then we're passing on all these, passing in rather, all these arguments to perform a silent installation. So we're going to install to this path, which is the default anyway. We're installing the management server component. We're installing the ops manager console. The SQL Server instance is on my server cull SQL01, as we've seen. The operational database name is Operations Manager. We're using the following action to count, and that is column S SCOM AA. And obviously, there's the password that we're throwing in there. And we obviously, there's our DAS account. And finally, we're not using error reporting or Microsoft Update and we are accepting the license agreement. Now, really, that's about all we need, but I have popped in some code here, which will point to the logs folder that gets created when the SCOM installation kicks off. The idea here being that when it determines the path has been created, it's gonna open up the Windows Explorer to that log file, and you can browse the logs because visually, we won't have a setup wizard like in our previous video. And I've also provided a little bit of code here if you like to use something like this to effectively tail the log file, which is gonna write out the log file to the Windows PowerShell console window. But obviously I've commented all this out, so you can use that if you like. All right, so let's give it a whirl. Actually, before I do, I will quickly go and open up the other script where we install the web console. And we will go word wrap on that as well. Just so you can see, the only real differences with this version is we are adding in OM Web Console to install the Web Console component. We're providing in the website name and what authentication mode we're using. But obviously, had I elected to run this script, we would have also needed to install those IIS prerequisites as well. All right, so let's close that one. We don't need it. In fact, let's close that. We don't really need it. We'll go back to our console and we'll run our script. So we're already here in our scripts folder and the one we need is 08. Install additional SCOM management server without the web console. So let's run that. And right now it's waiting for the SCOM logs folder to be created. Once it does detect it, you can see there you go, it's just popped up Windows Explorer to this path which exists under my administrator's account or under my user account. And you can see the logs that are being installed, which you can open up and have a look at. Now in about 10 minutes or so, this management server will be installed and as you can see, as I talk, it's already created the OM server log. And after this component is installed, we're gonna see the OM console log being created, followed by a web console and report server had we've installed those things. So as you've seen, it's pretty simple to install an additional management server. And if we click start, we might even see that our console's already there. In fact, there you go, it just recently added. So if we load it up, And we go to our administration section and choose management servers. There's both of our management servers ready to go. And if we give it a couple of minutes, we'll expect to see these other things being populated across here. So how easy is that? A second management server by script. So whether you install a management server manually or using a silent installation, I prefer the silent one myself, but both work equally fine. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'd like to thank you for watching.